Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over a few items, and we're going to start with this bed tray. And I really like the shape of this, and but I don't care for the color. I do like the green that's on the sides, but it's a little bright for me. So, um, I decided uh, I didn't really find a color in Dixie Belle that I liked, so I'm going to mix some of this farmhouse green uh, with a little bit of um, the color evergreen and just a little bit of the color collard greens. And the three of those together ended up um, working out and being exactly actually the color that I wanted and if you haven't tried mixing colors you should try if you have some that you just don't care for you really don't have a lot to lose uh, and I knew in my head what color I wanted but the greens in Dixie Belle I like a lot of the greens but there are areas between those colors that I feel like uh, there should be more colors so if that makes sense so um there's not a good dull green uh, and this collard green is just almost too gray and it just doesn't it's not green enough so uh, when you mix these together sometimes you'll get the color that you want and the best thing to do is just add a little bit of it at a time so once i got this the color that i wanted uh, then I'm going to give it two coats on uh, both the underside, the legs, and the top, uh, the whole thing. Uh, and two coats covered it well. And I really was happy with the color that I ended up getting. Now that I have two coats on this and I've let it dry well, uh, then I'm going to uh, put this redesign transfer on here. And I'll link that uh, transfer in the description. So now the next item that I'm going to uh, make over is a little mirror. And um, I love the color Tea Rose, which is a Dixie Belle color. But it's a little cooler than I want for this particular project. So I just added a little bit of the color Rebel Yellow. And uh, that warmed it up enough to, to where I was happy with the color.
Now that I have two coats of this pink on here, then I'm gonna add some of these transfers that I ordered from Amazon, and I'll link that in the description also. What I don't like about these, I ordered them because there's a lot of small ones, and I can use them on small projects. Um, but what I didn't like once I got them is they have a shiny surface after they transfer. So um, once I got these transferred on, I just took my sanding block and just kind of sanded over the top of them until I got that shiny surface off. So it still worked out. And then I also heard that you can, uh, you can uh, put some clear matte finish over the top of them and that will get rid of that shiny finish. Now, I still want to be able to use my friend's music on here. Um, so, I need to, um, I forgot to ask her this morning at church, but um, I need to find out how to do that without getting that copyright infringement. I'm still working on that. Now, the third item that I'm going to make over is this little bucket. And I think it might have been an ice bucket uh, and the inside is, is missing. Uh, but I'm just going to make it, uh, turn it into a little pot that you could put flowers or something in. And I'm going to give this two coats of the same color of pink that I mixed up. And then I'm going to put one of the bird molds on it, uh, one of the IOD bird molds on it. And, uh, and then put a coat of white wax on it. Now, I forgot to mention that with both of the other projects, I sealed those with a clear wax.
Several of you have given me some really good suggestions on how to keep my projects from rolling when I'm working on them, and I always seem to just wing it. Uh, but I've gotten some really good um, ideas on how to do that if I would just do it. And now for my last project, I'm going to make uh, a, some spring decor uh, that will be something that we can use in our Easter 
uh, decor. Uh, so what I want to do is make several crosses. I've already done some churches, and my next uh, my next item that I'm going to produce several of will be some crosses. Uh, but I'm just kind of trying to show you how to make one. Uh, if you don't have, I wanted to get some of the Dollar Tree cross shapes, uh, but it seems like they don't, I haven't been able to find them this year, and I used all of them that I bought for last year, so I just decided to take these little paint sticks and make my own. So what I do is I just cut these down until I get the shape that I want, and then what I'm going to do is cut, uh, cut the shape again but where I have my seams uh, to put them together there, I'm going to go ahead and make that piece whole. And the longer piece will be in two pieces, if that makes sense. And then that breaks up that seam. Uh, plus, it will double the thickness of this. Now, I said paint sticks. It's not paint sticks. It's tongue depressors. Um, but... Uh, and you can use any size you want. I guess you could even use popsicle sticks for this if you wanted. But as you can see here, I'm breaking up that seam. And that will make this stronger. And then the thickness will be much better. Because I'm going to be covering this anyway. So once I have all this glued together, then I'm just going to take uh, an old book page and cover it. So that again is going to strengthen this even more because I'm going to put this book page on both the front and the back and then just kind of cut it down to fit. So I found out what uh, my friend Myra used on all those beautiful clay molds. And um, I think she said it was called Amazing Casting Resin and she got it at Hobby Lobby. So, on my day off tomorrow, I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby and see if I can find some because I am definitely going to be making some of those. The only drawback is then you have to use them on flat surfaces because you've made them up ahead and uh, they're only going to dry fl fast, uh, flat because she said that they set up in like 10 minutes, which is awesome. And once I get this covered on the front and the back and I get it cut down the way I want it, uh, then, and I just took a little sanding block and sand it around the edges. Uh, but I'm, but I'm going to use some of these same uh, transfers on this cross. And I'll be sanding those to make them, uh, to make, to take off the shine also. And I did that on both the front and the back. And then I'm going to drill a hole at the top for my, uh, to attach a, um, tassel that I'm going to be making for this. Now because I have uh, both the front board and a back on these, then I'm going to need to kind of hide that seam down the sides. So I just tore a piece from a, a ribbon that I had and uh, I just want it just large enough to glue down the sides of these and that was just uh, what I found that worked. So I'm just going to hot glue that all the way around to hide that little seam. Then I felt like it needed a little something else. Uh, so I just made some little shabby roses uh, to put in the center there on the front. I didn't do it on both the back and the front, but on the front I just added some little shabby roses. Now if you haven't been watching me long and don't know how to make these, uh, I can attach a video uh, that will show some close-ups of how to make these shabby roses. So I'm just going to make a few of these, and then I'm going to just uh, glue some little pearls here and there between these. And that's all that I'll do to decorate the front of this.
Now here I've just taken some scraps of trim and even some torn fabric and making a tassel for this. And if you've not seen that done before, you just wrap it around a board and tie off, tie off one end and cut the other one. And then, uh, then you can just attach it onto the end by tying that on. And as you can see here, then you'll just kind of wrap a little ways down and tie that off and that will make your tassel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.